to Connected, the bilingual space we use to celebrate people's lives, achievements, passions and experiences, people that are anywhere in the world. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. Remember that if you are in Bolivia, you see us through the Abby Ayala channel and if you're not, you find us on Facebook, Twitter and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. Today we dive into the world of art. More specifically, we will talk about land art. To tell us all about it, I invited John Forma, who is in Pembrokeshire in the UK. Before we connect with John and his creations, let's meet him. John Foreman is a creator of various styles of land art. He is ever in search of different be it with stones or leaves, inland or on beaches, the scale of his work varies massively. He may use stones or driftwood to make something small and minimal, otherwise he may be seen drawing massive scale sand drawings up to 50 meters across. His work is ephemeral in many different ways. Most often the weather and immediate climate will make his work disappear, be blown down, washed away by the tide, and sometimes other people will interfere. This is all part of the creative process and has proven to benefit his work. Most of his work takes place in an already beautiful setting such as the Pembrokeshire coastline. Having grown up there, he saw the beauty of the coastline and woodlands and made use of them by collaborating with nature itself. John has displayed and created work at festivals such as Bujan's Sea Art Festival in South Korea, Lano Earth Art Festival in Texas, Big Retreat Festival in Pembrokeshire, Timber Festival and the Great Yorkshire Show. It is my pleasure today to introduce John Foreman. He's talking to us all the way from Pembrokeshire in the UK. And I wanna thank him for taking the time to spend this moment with us and to share his beautiful art. Welcome to Connected, John. Let's go ahead with the first question. Tell us what is land art and what are the beginnings of this art? Well, land art is mostly art using natural materials and used outside as well. Um, it's sort of started, most, most well-known artist is uh, Andy Goldsworthy who pretty much started it, but it also kind of started with uh, massive works with earth, so they'd, they'd carve into the earth miles long drawings into the earth. But that was like 70s, I think. I'm not sure where I could be wrong. But it's a long time back. A long time. And how did you get in touch with this with this type of art? Of art? How was your experience? Well, I've, I've always enjoyed uh, like a range of things and things like that. And uh, it just made sense with Pembrokeshire because there's beaches and woods and everything here naturally for me to use natural materials and just do it because it's like free then I don't have to go and let anything extra and then bring it to somewhere else it's all there ready to use right and how long ago have you started with all of the all of your creations well I started when I was in college I finished college in 2014 I think yeah so probably 2013 so maybe even no, earlier probably, 2012. Let's talk a little about your creative process. Let's say, as you said, you live on a place, your scenario, it's like surrounded by nature, correct? But like, yes, you, you say you go walking. How, how do you make, how do you put your ideas together? How do you decide the place you're going to start working and which materials you're gonna use? 
tell us about that, please. Yeah, so sometimes I'll plan beforehand a sort of idea based on previously what I will have made before, which like, you know, like some ideas work well and then I could like mix another idea, like changing colours with stones or something, you know, in, but using it in a different way to the way I've done before. So it kind of depends on if I've got an idea ready. If I don't, then it's just what naturally comes to me. Sometimes I'll just go to the woods or the beach and just try something and it'll just happen, you know. Naturally, what materials I'm looking for will just be there, like leaves or stones or, you know, anything. And I'll just try messing around with them until I'm happy with what I've made. I see. And tell us, how long does it take you? Because some of them are like not so big, but there are some others that are pretty big. So what's like the average time that takes you to get a creation done? On average, uh, I'd say about four hours. But um, there's been times when I left something, when I've been like part way through it, I've left it overnight. So I've spent one day and then I've come back and the next day then. I've actually come back three days in a row. So it was oh, probably about 12 hours total solid work on it. And another thing that it's like very, um, it's curious, I'm curious about it is that maybe if you have to leave one of your creations, let's say halfway because it's dark and you have to go and then you come back, you, there is a risk that when you come back, it's all gone, yeah. correct? Because yeah. it's in the outside, it's in the outdoors. It's very, it's very rare that I'll get the opportunity to leave them. Like most of the time, I'll, I'll just accept that it's over and I'll have to leave it, you know. Because in, in a lot of places, the tide will just take it, you know. But occasionally, there'll be enough space with the tide for me to leave it overnight. So it just depends on the tides, but eventually it'll get wiped out anyway, but yeah. Right. Okay, so. I've seen like the most, the ones that impact me the most are the ones done on sand. One, because they're pretty big, they're large. And another one, because it seems like, I mean, you don't see steps <laughs> around your, the, around your, your art. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how does it work when you work with sand? How do you make it, how do you put it all, like all your idea together and you make it look so neat? Well, um, it's actually a lot easier to draw a straight line with something that will make a line that is, you know, like this wide, you know, about a foot, or a foot and a bit wide, which, you know, it's just so much easier than like drawing a, line, a straight line with a pen, it's so much harder. But also, you know, to, to actually make something, all you need is a rake, some string and a stick. The string and the stick of uh, using like a compass, like you would use a compass on a paper, piece of paper, um, and you just bring the string out and draw using the, the string then to make a circle. And then you can like you can make guidelines and measure and stuff like that. But I, I like to do that as little as possible because it takes the fun out of it. It's more fun to naturally draw. Yeah. So. But as far as, um, I mean, you know, with measuring, you're more likely to get the exact, you know, lines that you want that make it really perfect as well. But yeah, like I said, this is, uh, I find it more fun to just sort of play with it. I make some Great. measurements and then once I've done that, I can, you know, freedom that to do what you want. Yeah. Um, you sort of said about um, not being able to see like footprints maybe, but um, with that, the beach is so compact, the sand is so compact that your feet barely make any any mark. And like I said, each line is you know, each line is about this wide. So your footprint is probably about this wide. And the footprint right. only goes into the sand. Tiny tiny bit. Yeah. So Oh I see. From above. So th that's yeah. the reason There's not enough shadow. You can't see any. Tell us about your work with rocks and leaves. How does it work with those different materials? With rocks and leaves, well, this is like going back to my enjoying arranging objects and things. With rocks and leaves, it's just, it's just, I enjoy it. I just really enjoy it. And it's really calming and therapeutic to, to work like that. 
Um, yeah, it's hard to explain really. I mean, you just, so you sort of just start. You just try it and see where your hands take you, you know? And then it expands and expands, expands. It was, the more time you spend on it, the more happy with it you'll be, sort of thing. Right, and then the ta the way you have to to share this art with the world, um, you use you do photography, correct? Yeah, and I wouldn't consider how do how do you manage that? Because it's not like you can tell people come see, <laughs> like come in the middle of the woods or the beach to to see what you're doing. So you kind of have to get like find ways to pull it off and show it to the world. So yeah. which are the ways you do that? Well, I take through, I just take the photos, digital camera, you know, as I go. Um, sometimes I'll get to see the creation disappear and sometimes I won't have time, but yeah, and then um, once once it's gone, it's gone, but I still have the picture, right. we'll got the photos, so then I'll post those online to Instagram and Facebook and we'll have you on my website. You also participate in different art festivals. Yeah. When you go to this kind of, uh, of festivals, how do you do? Um, well, I've just come back from uh, Lana with Art Fest, who uh, I, I went with uh, my girlfriend there, and we both we both created stuff there. Um, it, it's an incredible festival in Texas where I've met all the artists who I've known online for years. You know, I met about oh, twenty wow. three of them, and. Um, yeah, it's just, it's an incredible place, you know, stone balancing, land art like what I do and a lot of stone work and, you know, working with sticks and all sorts of things. It's, it's incredible and the atmosphere is all positive, it's really amazing. So when you go to these kind of festivals, you have an area for, for you to like bring your material and create something there, like at the spot at the, during that time? Uh, yeah, well, it's actually very free. It's very, uh, um, so weird. Well, you, you can do what you want, really. You can work in whatever space you want. You can, yeah, it's very relaxed. That's the word I was looking for. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, you sort of, we sort of trust that people won't ruin the work because they're there to see it, you know. But uh, it, right. it, you know, it requires a bit of fixing maybe every day just to keep on top of it because people don't always see where they're going and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's very free. There's no like roping off, there's no like sections, you know, so yeah. Okay, but, yeah. and um, tell me about um, other festivals that you have uh, participated. Any particular piece that you have done that you remember, like you you have a soft spot for it or are it a special experience with? Well, uh, um, last last year was my first time at the same festival. I came last year um, at Lano Earth Art Festival, um, and uh, it was. I just found it incredible to meet that many people who I'd known all in one place, all at one time. And uh, one one of the people who uh, I met there, James Brunt. Um, me and him, we created a, a big piece at the festival, and it was, it was just great to collaborate with him. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's great to meet everyone. It does look like a great festival. John, I cannot wait to hear more about you. For now, we're gonna go through a really fast cut. Please hold, and people at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Connected. Stay tuned. Welcome back everyone and we are still in connection with John Foreman who is telling us all about land art. John, this is the last question for you and I really want you to tell me, share with us what is your personal experience with land art? What is it that, do you have, do you, is there any benefit on like you going through the process of putting your creations together? Absolutely, definitely. Right, so the way I see it is an escape. It's kind of like therapy. You, you have all the stresses of life at home, you know, bills and, you know, all the messiness of, like, or, or even the messiness of city life or town life, and you go to the beach or the woods 
and you escape all that and lose yourself in the process of making something which I think is the best part about it really it's, it's amazing I love doing it that's, that's the overall true, view of it right and have you ever had the chance to see your your piece or your creation fade away yeah many times many times i've watched it really? uh, get away i've seen the sand drawings disappear by the, the sea taking it over i mean i've even been making something with leaves and it's just get blown away in the middle of the process yeah. even if i don't think it yeah there's lots of different there is also really a little a little lesson there, I guess. Like there's something on, on not getting upset just because you were doing something and, and the wind just took it away. Yeah, yeah. It's really how fun. about, how about the future? What do you see? How do you see the future for you and for your creations? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I mean, I might get a bit more exposure. I mean, I know that I. I've done some work that, that might be coming out in the next couple of years, uh, potentially on TV and stuff. I should be doing a couple of festivals this year, hopefully. And I think that's about it at the moment. I, I don't know. Like overall for my work, I, I don't know. I honestly don't. But I quite like it. Right. That. Well, I believe like every time there is more exposure of this type of art. I, especially on, on social media, there is more and more, we see more and more pictures and more and more um, sometimes even videos and, and different diff types of uh, artists. For now, I want to give you space so you can um, share your social media information so people can follow you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, social media, I'm called Sculpt the World uh, on Instagram, that's all one word. Uh, on Facebook, you'll be able to find it just by searching Sculpt the World. And my website is sculptotheworld.smugmug.com. Well, John, I wish much success for you and I hope you continue doing your beautiful pieces and you continue traveling the world showing this amazing art. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and until next time with me. Take care. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. Bye. So there you go, let's support John's work by following him on his social media. Whether you are into land art or not, his work is admirable. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye.